Hey future nurses, welcome back to the Blueprint Nursing YouTube channel. My name is Nicole, and today we're talking about isolation precautions. After our review, we'll check out an NCLEX style question to test out our knowledge. Let's get started. I'm sure we remember learning how to wash our hands in fundies, and it seems so simple, right? But then we learned that hand hygiene is only a small piece of the infection control puzzle. Everything from standard precautions, to antibiotic administration, to isolation precautions, all fall under the umbrella of infection control. Standard precautions are a set of practices that are designed to protect all clients in all settings. We know that standard precautions involve hand hygiene and use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, right? Well, when a client has a suspected or known communicable disease, isolation precautions are put into place to build upon those safety measures. Three common isolation precautions are contact, droplet, and airborne isolation. Clients on isolation precautions are placed in private rooms to prevent the spread of infection. Let's get into specifics. First up, contact isolation. This practice is used for clients that have an infectious disease that essentially is spread through touch. We're talking about skin to skin contact, contact with infected bodily fluids, and contact with items that have been contaminated. So which infectious diseases require contact isolation? A couple of the examples are MRSA, VRE, and C. diff. Remember that with C. diff, you should wash your hands with soap and water. C. diff has spores that are resistant to hand sanitizers and can live on surfaces for weeks or months. When we have a client in a contact isolation room, we're going to don gloves and a gown every time we enter that room. Let's talk about droplet isolation. This practice is used for clients that have an infectious disease that is spread through respiratory droplets. What do you think respiratory droplets are? Well, they're droplets that are produced and spread when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Droplets may travel a few feet before they settle on a surface. A couple of examples of infectious diseases that require droplet isolation are influenza, adenovirus, and rubella. We'll wear gloves, gown, goggles, and a surgical mask anytime we enter a droplet isolation room. All right, let's move on to airborne isolation. This practice is used for clients that have an infectious disease spread through the air by airborne particles. Airborne particles are kind of like respiratory droplets, but they are much smaller. Airborne particles can travel through the air much longer than respiratory droplets, which is why they pose such a high risk of transmission. So, which infectious diseases require airborne isolation? We're looking at varicella, tuberculosis, and measles. Clients with COVID-19 are generally on droplet precautions unless they are receiving an aerosol generating procedure. Then they're on airborne precautions. These clients require negative pressure rooms rather than typical private rooms. Negative pressure rooms draw airflow into the room to prevent the spread of airborne particles outside of the room. Before entering an airborne isolation room, we'll don gloves, gown, goggles, and a respirator, like an N95 or a powered air purifying respirator. Respirators are tight fitting face coverings that can filter airborne particles. Okay, we've covered isolation precautions. Let's try our hand at a question. So this will be a play on the next gen NCLEX's matrix multiple response question. The left column will have an infectious disease and the top row will have different types of isolation precautions. Take a moment to pause here, make your picks and come back when you're ready. Ready for a run through? Let's go. MRSA? Yeah, contact. Influenza? Absolutely. Droplet? C. diff? Contact. TB? This one used to trip me up. This one is airborne. And rubella? Droplet. Great work. Here's the materials we used in this review. Thanks so much for stopping by everyone. I hope you found today's review helpful. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe for more reviews. Stay connected with us on our TikTok and Instagram for more nursing content. Keep up the great work and we'll see you next time.